topic. You know, the CEP takes three hours. We try to get this in a one hour. Uh, we're not doing so well. So let's have some short questions and, and short answers. So, uh, gentleman has a hand up. Yes, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Gary Hedrick because without his persistence in the beginning, which we followed in for a while, and we some of us thought, oh boy, Gary's fighting a, a losing battle here. But he was instrumental on maybe getting the rest of you going. So I want to give a real shout out to Gary. Thank you. Thank you. You're still there, Gary. Thank you. Okay, so uh, has Donna, has anybody uh, talked to the French or the Germans? Look, the French uh, nuclear program has been going on for years, and they have a huge program. They, as a matter of fact, are happy to take in nuclear fuel from other countries to store it. Do they well, have an answer? Uh, well, yes, they do. And uh, yes, I researched what they're doing. I found out that the, I talked to the German company, um, and they didn't want to bid the job. You know, these crazy Americans, they won't buy anything good. They want everything cheap. cheap. So, but I talked the German company that makes the the, 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 uh, the 19 three quarter inch ones. I talked them into bidding the job. Uh, we managed to convince Edison to meet with them. Uh, I worked with the NRC and encouraged them to allow the German company to present at the annual NRC meeting, which they hadn't let them do in 20 years. So I've, I've, been, I've been trying a lot of different angles. And the problem isn't that they won't sell to us. You know, there's the French company make the thick casts that were used at Fukushima that survived the great earthquake, survived the tsunami. So, so there's proven technology out there that's been used and used for over 40 years. They keep it in buildings for some of the bomb protection we're talking about. But the problem is, um, in our country, um, our Nuclear Regulatory Commission is captured. The, the staff level people know the right thing, but when it gets to management, they just, it's really the Nuclear Rubber Stamp Commission is what it really is. And so that, that's the problem. And our elected officials don't even know what's going on. Um, and the people with power and influence in this country don't know what's going on. So that's the problem. If we would buy it, you know, we, we, can, we can buy a commercially available technology. Because Germany also is, uh, dis they're disassembling all of their nuclear plants. They've decided right. to get out of the industry. Right. They must know something too. I mean, yes. can we yes. look to other people to say, hey, this well, is a the, problem? The, solution, is there the solutions solution? are there. We, just, there. we just don't want to use them. We, yes, that's the problem. Yes, we, we need to have OK, to. can I tell you a little something about okay. Europe? OK. Travel there a great deal. <clears throat> we have meetings like this, and we talk. Basically, all of us are probably in agreement. We're, we're talking to the choir here, right? right? So in Italy, my wife and I were traveling around one day, and our friend said, Alberto said, uh, you better not get on the train today. I said, why? He says, they're going to be a strike. I said, so what? You know, there's a strike. He says, no, you don't understand. The if the train's in the middle of the desert, in the middle of Italy, it stops. It doesn't go again until they get what they want. Mm -hmm. So here we go out, and we get our signs, and we walk around like this. And all those people you're talking about at the head go, okay, well, this will be over in a day or so. I think it's going to take something like that. The unions over there have a lot of strength. They, when they go on strike, everything goes on strike. <laughs> and they say, okay, what do you want? Good example. In France, after the, the Depression, recession, the government, they've got so many holidays, and they said, we're going to rescind one holiday. They've got hundreds of them. They've got six weeks vacation, and they get tons of holidays, right? So the, the government says, we're going to rescind one. The whole country went on strike. The next day, the legislators got together and said, well, let's forget about that. <laughs> Results. So, you know, I mean, this is a serious thing. Right, we right. need to do serious stuff. Right, right. Is stuff that has been designed and not really tried very much. Because it takes a long time to try it. It takes years and years to find out how long these things crack. And they haven't even had them that long. OK, I'll show you. I have to respond. I have to respond okay. to that. Yeah. OK. okay. Um, Ray's talking about transport. I'm talking about storage. The thick casts are stored in that. The thin canisters, that's how they're stored. No, I'm not. Oh, let me, don't, I didn't interrupt you. Let me finish and then you can come back. I, I'm okay. interjecting my the thin, Let me finish. <laughs> the, the, uh, 
The, the thin canisters have to be put, they don't, they don't protect from gamma rays and neutrons, so they have to be put in a concrete overpack or concrete cast, but that has air vents in it. A lot of people don't know it has air vents for convection cooling. So it's only that 5 eighths of an inch that's protecting us in storage. Now in terms of transport, the NRC just approved a transport cask for these thin ones. Since they don't know, you won't, you won't believe this. Since they don't know how to inspect for cracks, since they don't know how to inspect for cracks, they're going to pretend that there aren't any and let them transport them anyway, even though the regulations don't allow it. And so they're, and they, they know that damp, that fuel may be damaged inside those existing canisters. But because they're friggin' welded shut rather than bolted, there's no way they can go inside without destroying the canister and find out what's going on. Uh, and the Japanese banned these fuel baskets. You see those little squares in there? That's a basket, and these fuel assemblies go in each one of those slots. The Japanese have uh, abolished using aluminum baskets because they said they aren't going to hold up. I told the NRC this, and they said, oh, we'll get back to you. That was two years ago. Okay, and then the, uh, the storage, the transport cast, the NRC approved, um, it's, for, it's for loading and transporting, but they excluded unloading from the license. <laughs> yeah, but who's reading a 630 page report? Only one person in this room. You know, I'd like to get back to questions from the audience. I think, watch, watch, there you go. You know, one of the things that, that just came up is the NRC is a captured agency. That's part of the problem. Another problem is with us uh, and the public apathy. You talk to your neighbors, you talk to your fellow citizens, they don't know, they don't care. That's one of the major problems, and that's uh, something that we should be thinking about. The engineering things are great, but how do we get people excited about this? Question. Okay, so my name is Dave. This is my first meeting coming here, and I want to applaud all of you for your work on this and for all of the effort. This has been a, an issue that's been important to me personally for ever since I moved to Orange County in 83. Um, and the way I see this is that while all this work that's going on about moving it and getting it out of here and everything is very important and needs to continue, and we're up against a lot of problems, that we can't really, I mean, a lot of it aren't in our hands. I mean, you know, what we're doing is awesome, but there's all these other regulatory folks that have to be involved. What we can do, and what I don't hear enough of, is if something happens, like Tom's talking about, tomorrow, next week, next month, what are we going to do? What is our plan to get folks as isolated as possible, as quickly as possible, to minimize the exposure so that we can get them into places where they need to be protected, if that's possible, within or outside the 50 miles, and get them to a place where they can be evacuated properly. It seems crazy to me that we don't have some planning process in place to make all this happen. And I would, I'm very interested in being involved in that, and I would encourage us to also do something, because I think that's something we can all very much affect. Well, there's a counterpoint to that argument if you give the public the impression that it's escapable. Radiation's escapable. There's things we can do, like running away from a forest fire or an earthquake or something. But if the public knew you can't evacuate, you can't go anywhere, you can't defend yourself against gamma rays, then maybe they say, we better just to get busy and, and do something. But Roger, to reinforce yeah. this point, if the plan showed that yeah. in a graphical way, Exactly. Sure. You would prove the point, right? Yeah, it's not an either or. I mean, and, yeah, and they don't do that. The emergency responders don't do that. They, they like to make you think that it's escapable. Right. And even if you get out, you can't come back. People yeah. don't understand well, yeah, that. Real you estate. lose okay. everything. You know, I'd like to recognize Jim has to have a word to say tonight. Yeah. No, I, I just think that one of the things about that is I think one of the important things about what I'm sorry, Dave, Dave is yeah. suggesting is, is that it's a great way to open the subject, the nice. because once people are talking about this, 
they're all going to realize that yeah. when somebody tells you you can move 8 million people 50 miles in no time at all, they're going to realize that that's just not really practical. Mm -hmm. And the fact that what, what, what I think it would do would be to, to help educate millions of people who now, as you say, can ignore it, but they can't ignore the idea of some catastrophe happening and them wanting to leave, that would then open the dialogue up and make people realize what an issue we have here. So you probably I'm, talk to the emergency people in San Clemente, I have too, and they feel it's their job to tell everybody if it's possible that we have a plan for everything. Oh. And, and we, we have an escape route and we have this and we have that. And, and, and they don't communicate the issue that it's not going to work. Well, I talked to the, the emergency planning folks that are doing this, and um, they have plans. They, they say, for example, that there's going to be a staged way so the people closest to the plan are going to leave first. Everybody else waits for them to leave, and then slowly they will work out. Right. And the, the plans are nonsense. Right. You know, the fact that we have these nuclear plants, this is much safer. The, a nuclear plant is about a gazillion times more dangerous than the, just the waste. Right. And and we've got these plants all over the place, and it's yeah. hush hush. As I think it would be a really good thing to, to start realizing there is no way out. Especially not so much here. You go over to New York City, there is no way out of the, the plants. They're right there by New York City. Okay, another question. You. Yeah, um, because of what just happened with all the hurricanes and such, it, does anybody have anybody that they know that, has, that writes for the register of the Times or something? It seems like a perfect time to kind of like sure. use to, be, like, because people are kind of like, wow, what just it's happened, good. it's yeah. scary. And, like, what, and, hey, we have our own kind of like hurricane problem here. It's called, you know, radiation. And it has to, because people are kind of paying attention right now. Well, I Does anybody the, know anybody? I was the first call. Um, I was the, uh, when the settlement uh, came out that Ray worked on, that actually a number of us contributed to that lawsuit also um, in terms of our knowledge and helping to write a lot of it. Um, the register, I was their go-to call, Terry Sforza. She called me and well, it's maybe there. someone can suggest but, to that. But, but, uh, but yeah. they would they would give you a little tiny bit and it's mainly Edison's focus and then they give you a little token. So there's this pressure to not tell this side. Tell both sides. Maybe we need the time, not the register, because we know where they uh, sign. Well, they right. Doug, do you have a comment? Speak. No speeches. <laughs> yeah. I, look, folks. Everybody has wonderful points here, but uh, but I've spent two and a half years trying to get people to focus, you know, at the ballot box on this. And uh, rational thought isn't going to work. You're, you're going to have to start really oh making God. people afraid, because yeah. other, otherwise they, they aren't even going to they aren't even going to make uh, decisions, you know, at the ballot box. Daryl Issa has made bank for 16 years just saying, well, I hold um, the CEP panels. Roger and I have talked and he said, hey, Doug, you should go to San Juan Campus Town because Daryl's going to be there. And I said, no, he's not, not going to be there. And he never has showed up at a single one of them. He says he will, he never does, and nobody ever holds him accountable for it. So, Part of it is the same thing that, that gave us trouble. Everybody said, well, it's not going to happen. Well, it's happened. It's happened. It's happened. Mm -hmm. it's happened. Okay. We're stuck with it. Well, I know someone at the OCP. So you're, you're, you're going to have to get people literally out of their houses to, to change things. Because if they just sit there and say, we're informed and we're going to vote for the right people and that will change things, it's not going to change things. It just won't. We have to get people out of their houses and have the ballot boxes. Zero ice is part of the problem. Yeah. If, if we had 1,500 more, more votes for you last year, yeah. I, you would be in there doing a lot of stuff. But I, I mean, you, you, you raised the, the uh, Simcus bill? Yeah. Okay. Once again, I'm not going to mention any names, but people are saying that, oh, this, this is going to fix things. Yeah. And, and I've been to campaign forums where this is being said, and I shake my head and I said, no, it's not. It's going to turn over a to private industry with no transparency 
a problem that's going to be around for 250,000 years. This is felony stupid. Mm -hmm. I think the liability, even if it gets, even if there are host sites that agree to take it, the liability is still going to have to be with the federal government. And already, according to the information I read, we have paid five billion and settled more lawsuits and failed to crack the lawsuits. And the last thing I read was, um, well, the, there was the Nuclear Waste Policy Act in 1982 that requires the storage of nuclear waste. And um, uh, I think money is why, I've always thought money is why our plant was shut down. I've always thought that it stopped penciling out, and I still believe that. And I uh, and I believe that more and more, especially as we learn that we have excess energy, and it's proving. So according to the Department of Energy, if Yucca fails completely and waste stays at current sites, 75 to 82 billion in 2015 dollars over the first 100 years included including decommissioning fees of Yucca Mountain. So maybe we should be thinking about what this is costing and use that. Liability is huge and I'm really in favor of grassroots, but we really aren't focusing at all on what this is costing the government, which is us. Maybe we should think about well, I think again the government is part of the problem. You know the old saying that people have to become leaders and leaders have to become followers. And I think that we're at that stage. We have to we have to lead them and we have to set fire to to their toes. Leah, did you have a question? I did. It wasn't a question. Uh, I have a statement. Go ahead. So I can't hear much better than mine. Oh, thank you. Speak up. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Um, I agree with everything. Uh, that the speakers have said, all of them. And we know that money's the driver. I want to know a couple of things before I make the statement. And one is, have we put monitors close to, in and around, within a 25 mile or even 10 mile radius of the uh, songs? Who's we? Can you tell us that? Anybody. Anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody. No. No, yes or no? Uh, no. Okay, now. They won't allow it. <laughs> they won't allow it. But what do you mean they? Who won't allow us to put a monitor, a university register, to monitor it five miles away in bushes? Who will not allow that? There are monitoring stations. They all go right to Edison and to the NRC. I'm and not talking there at all. I'm not talking there. Roger, not anymore. No. And I'm, what I'm suggesting is that a specific study is done and signs are made, enter the ocean at your own risk. Now, you put that along the coast highway, and pretty soon you have all the media there. And that's the kind of thing you're talking about because that's what you need, grassroots. It's the same as the pipeline, the Dakota pipeline. Yeah. You have to do that kind of a thing, otherwise it's not going to be done. And it's the hue and cry. Once you get people excited, you're going to get the uh, your city council people, you're going to get the media, and you're going to start seeing something. Because that's the only way to do it. It has to hit. It has to hit business, it has to hit tourism, it has to hit the very things that people come down here for, which is the ocean and the beauty and real estate. And that's what we sell. Don has comment. And, and, yeah. Disney, and Disneyland. And Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> about, about four years ago, we went yeah. to the City Council of San Clemente with a proposal to spend $18,000 and put a radiation monitor on top of City Hall. They refused. That's because it was a private entity. You put it out well, in bushes. Well, no, they said it's not necessary because there are already monitors out there. No, but you're we right. have no access to She's continuous right. monitors. They do, they do grab yeah, samples every six so. months and report them. We want continuous monitoring publicly available. There aren't any. Right. 
We don't have the right city council in San Clemente. No, you, no, I mean, get rid of 10, you didn't think it'd be a no-brainer. We go to the city council, eighteen thousand dollars. Let's put a monitor and publicly available, continuous, all the time. And uh, that's a great idea. Let's, Roger, let's I think you had your few minutes. The question over here. The question is here. All right, I'm on the wrong side of the room. Go ahead. So I, I was wondering, you had a question too. I was wondering, it seems to be looking at the room. Microphone. Looking at the room and looking at the proportion of people representing uh, some opposition to what is happening, considering the population of the whole area that's going to be affected. It's very, very small, right? We, what, what is it, 30 people? And you said 8 million people are affected in the area? So, so it's, it's in the dirt, right? It's, it's small. And our task is, as, the, as you said, we have to have some convincing argument. The fact that we are agreeing with each other here is not going to do really very much. You have to have a proverbial you know, equivalent of the gun to the head of people that make decisions to make something happen, right? I'm not advocating some kind of violence or anything like that, but we have to be smart about it and come up with a technique that pushes on a on the points that are very fragile, that, that are affecting everybody. What I'm saying is, we are not alone in this. There's many of these plans. People are ignorant. There is, there's what, dozens of them, hundreds of them across the country. They are all going through the same problem. They all have these small groups of people that are affected by the stuff, that, that are conscious of it and they are acting against it. But majority of the people don't do anything, right? If we, through social media, figure out a way to communicate across the nation to all of these people, we all have the same, exactly the same idea, the same problems, maybe there's going to be some kind of numbers movement that is going to bring attention on the object, different scale. That's just a suggestion. I don't know. Excellent suggestion. We have, there are lots of groups all over the country. They go to Donna's website. Roger. Here we go. I was just wondering how does mainstream media fit into our strategy? Because I know that the LA Times is not our friend. They had an article which was a complete whitewash a couple of months ago that had uh, uh, the fellow from SCE holding his number 11 rebar. Pas What's his name again? Tom Papasano. Uh, yes. Right, and uh, he's holding his number 11 rebar. that's buried in the concrete. That's going to protect us. And what I thought of is, hey, Batman, number 11 rebar. The world is saved. It was the most absurd article, the most absurd pictures that I've ever seen. Somehow we have to attract the mainstream media. That's the way to do it. The, the media are part of the problem. Uh, first of all, they don't cover it. Now they're getting a little bit more coverage. There's a few reporters, but that, that's part of the problem. Um, Bob. Let's see, Bob has a question. Well, it's a question and a comment. Um, last time you we were here, I think you talked about how, the, you know, Westinghouse declared bankruptcy. And the nuclear industry actually appears to be a dying industry. Except for the ways. Well, but it's a dying industry. Where's the money? So here's the problem. We keep talking about the politicians, but there's no money, and they don't care if there's no money. Is that the case? Is that part of the problem here? Is the pocket isn't there? There's no defender for it? They're, they're, it's just a dead industry. And it's a problem. It's an albatross around everybody's neck at this point. No, I think I think it, it's uh, it's not the, it's not the money in that respect. It may be the money and that the uh, nuclear utilities and energy providers um, have have the money and want more money, and they have the in, they have the influence. They have the ear. And what I met with the governor's office, uh, was, I met with Ken Alex. And he said, Donna, you know, we see the, you know, PG&E and Edison here all the time. You guys are hardly ever here. You know, it's the acts, and they've actually been lied to, these very misleading statements. So they have these people at the highest levels. But that's old news. That's dying, isn't it? Yeah, yeah because they're replacing with, with fracking. They're, we're going to have to fight that. Uh, when, when Hillary Clinton's, if you look at Hillary Clinton's campaign website, 
she wanted to invest in new nuclear technology, small modular reactors. So it's it, yeah. So they don't get you know they're not getting it. The Dems aren't getting it. Okay. Is it Ken Alex is one of the governor's chief advisors, and talk about people who are dead to the ear, Governor Brown, doing nothing, yeah. defending it, Kamala Harris, nothing. Is it true on this point that the government is actually paying fines to all of the uh, nuclear power plants yeah. because they have not met their commitment to move it off site, which they said they were going to yes. do in the 80s? And if so, how much is that? Yes, they, they, uh, every utility has to file, has to sue the federal government because the DOE didn't comply. And then they get reimbursed for their attorney fees and expenses. You know how much and I, I have on the website. I have it's a teaser. Go to the website. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. On the nuclear waste page, I have a cost of nuclear, and it, and, and then a nuclear waste page, and it, and it covers a lot of the cost issues, and it, it has a link to the to the you know the case and everything. Oh, a really interesting side point. This experimental system that. Edison just picked, they should get the, the award for picking the worst system in the world to store waste in. Uh, the, another nuclear plant, Vermont Yankee, said they didn't buy this system because it was unproven, experimental, too complex, and they didn't think the federal government would reimburse them because it was overly compressed, cost more, and wasn't going to give them anymore. They get a lot of money every year, right? I'm thinking 50 million or something like that. Um, I just want to speak to this point, and, and uh, the lady over here mentioned uh, about the economic factors and why songs closed, that it was because they wanted out of the, the I do think you're right about that. They, although they had to shut it down because of their own mistakes, but at that point they really wanted out of it, and, and they didn't go through the repair. If you look at the cost of solar, it's on a curve that's going down like this with no end in sight. All the other other ones, nuclear is going up, yeah. oil is up, gas is going up, everything else is going up. Yeah. Yeah. This is, I was saying on my website the other day, this is the most important curve of our life because solar is going to kill all this other polluting and wind. Um, technologies. We don't have to tax carbon, nothing. This solar curve is going to kill everything because yeah. it's going down so fast. Now, nuclear industries, this thing, if we had everybody with rooftops, these companies that used to be responsible for the nuclear waste are going to be gone. Yeah. And then we're still going to have to deal with it. Exactly. Uh, the problem here is, and it's alluded to, the NRC is like a big brick wall around everything. You can't get anything done because they are promoting the industry. And if you ever file a case with them, you get two sets of attorneys, one from the utilities, one from the NRC, all both fighting against you. And they are set up to promote nuclear power, even though they say they're just safety. They're promoting it, and there's a mindset here in this country. We want to be at the leader of the pack. Didn't Trump say that? We want to be at the top of the And there's people, we want to have these nuclear plants so we can have our skin in the game, so we can make another nuclear bomb. Now look, you can't measure this stuff very well because there's so much still radiation in the environment from the nuclear bombs that we've put off in the, in the air. So it's all over the place, and so it, no, this far away from the plant, you're gonna, you're not gonna see it. But economics, it, you know, even if we don't have that carbon tax, I'm so happy to see that solar curve coming down. That's gonna do the right thing. Absolutely. Where do you think the Nuclear Energy Commission gets its money? Us, Congress. No. I get it from the industry. That's right. Ninety-two percent of the funds of the NRC come from the companies that they regulate. Can you imagine a regulatory agency which is paid by the companies they're supposed to regulate? Talk about a captured industry. They're going to fight tooth and nail. Even though nuclear power is a declining industry, they're going to fight it tooth and nail. Okay. Two, uh, two important points. The, there's five NRC commissioners, and they're appointed by the president but they have to be confirmed by the Senate. Obama was only able to get one safety conscious one ele elected. Not a, the chairman has, the, the president, 
uh, uh, the chair, uh, the uh, president can pick the chairman, but the chairman only gets one vote, and so and the Senate won't confirm anybody that's not in that camp. So that's that's the the power problem there. And what and what shut San Onofre down is we got them when they were weak. The plant was down, and the strategy uh, uh, with Friends of the Earth was let's keep them down as long as they can. They're bleeding a million dollars in profit every day per reactor. So the longer we can drag this out, get delays with the uh, nuclear regulatory, but the longer we can drag it out, we can hurt them financially, and where they were gonna cry uncle, and then uh, they actually negotiated with PV to, uh, you know, what is it gonna take for Edison to, you know, not start, and hey, hey Edison, you know, you're gonna be hung up for years in lawsuits. So basically they, they got them when they were weak and it's always one word, money. So that's, you know, that's not to be forgotten. President Obama appointed Gregory Jasko, chairman of the NRC. And guess what? The other four commissioners forced him out. That's the way they play the game. But, but that's how you kill it, right? I mean, you kill it with money, right? There's yeah. not gonna be any yeah. money. That's a good, so we got a lot of work to do. Maybe we should break up into smaller, uh, I mean, uh, people that have to go, we're over, over schedule. Mary, did you, did you have a? We have a sign-up sheet going around, so if you want to help save Southern California, sign up. If you don't, don't sign up. <laughs> 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 That's the truth. Oh, okay, I just wanted to make one quick uh, comment. We are faced with a, a great challenge, but We've been, in, a, in the last 30 years of our um, work together, Jim and I, faced with a lot of campaigns that have big challenges. The Ward Valley fight, for instance, they're going to put a dump in the Mojave that would have uh, infiltrated in, uh, radioactive waste throughout the um, water supply of LA, Phoenix, Tucson, northern Mexico. And when I got involved, it was a shoe-in. It was supposed to be going in in three months. We stopped it. Uh, what I'm saying is, you don't have to accept defeat. What looks like um, a hopeless situation, surprising things happen when a lot of people get their intentions together. So don't give up. Yeah. Thank you all for coming, and let's all get busy. We've got a lot of work. Which side are you on? Which side?